Hello, OCSB math teachers. We've seen lots of examples over the last couple of weeks of fantastic things that people are doing for their distance learning. We wanted to give a quick example with Math Up because we're getting a lot of questions from teachers around how to use Math Up for distance learning. So first thing I wanted to highlight is right on your dashboard, there is a great video from Marion Small talking about how you might use Math Up from home. Um, another thing that is on your dashboard, there's a link to some of the supporting activities in digital games, which is a great way to use Math Up at home to send a link for a digital game. And then another uh, recent addition here, there are some shareable links to some free open questions. And if you've ever used open questions from Marion Small, you'll know that they're fantastic. And these are a great kind of little prompts that you could send home for families to discuss at home as part of their at-home learning. So I just wanted to start off by saying that we know MathUp is an amazing resource and it focuses a lot on um, open kinds of questions, on questions that really require a lot of critical thinking, that students really spend a lot of time working through and building up their conceptual understanding of the math concepts that they're working on. When we're doing math up for distance learning, some of it, of course, will have to look a little bit different. If we think about a typical lesson in math up, a typical lesson we would do in class, there will be lots of opportunities for you as the educator to talk about and to ask prompting questions and to explain things. There will be lots of opportunities for students to discuss with each other and to share ideas and to build on knowledge with each other. So of course, distance learning, they don't have those opportunities. So we really need to think carefully when we're sharing some of the things from Math Up, really think carefully about what kinds of activities we might want to share and how we might want to alter activities before we send them out. Remembering that we're not there to explain it and remembering that at home, there are all different situations that students have um, they may or may not have access to an adult who is able to help them with it. So just really put some thought into what is going home and how much of that can be done independently um, without a direct adult supervising. So I'm going to go into grade five and we'll pick a lesson and we'll just talk about some ways that we might um, alter it if we were going to send it home. So let's say I was doing some decimal operations. This one, of course, has a prerequisite, so this would have been something that we had covered in class previously. As always, it starts with a great topic planning section. Um, there's an area here for curriculum. This is a really good place to start for any math lesson, whether you're doing it um, as distance learning or in the classroom. Um, we have our expectations over here. And then over here, we have our essential understandings. So this is a really good thing to read through before you start really planning for um, what you might send home. If you were doing this listen, le lesson as distance learning for your students, you might decide to start with the diagnostic task. And if this were um, something I were planning for my students, I would give them the diagnostic task on one day as one activity. So that would be their math activity for the day. Um, here in this particular diagnostic task, um, you could take it as a Google Doc, you could share it through HAPRA, and students could then um, put in their answer or record their thinking through a voice note and send it back to you, and it would definitely give you some information about how ready they are to tackle this particular set of lessons. So if we go to the first lesson here, um, as usual, there is a learning goal to start with. If you were building this into a workspace, you might start by putting the learning goal into the workspace so they can see what the point is. Um, there's always these great little and the point is sections, which are always good to read over, um, just to kind of give you that big idea of what is the lesson about. Many of the minds on activities uh, some of them are appropriate for sharing, some may not be appropriate for sharing. 
For this particular minds on, um, normally if you were doing this in class, you would provide students with base 10 blocks and place value charts and counters and all those great things. And they might be doing a turn and talk or working in partners or with groups. Obviously for distance learning, they're not gonna be able to do that. In this particular minds on, the students watch a little video with two cats. They know the combined mass of the two cats and they have to decide how much they think um, the mass of each individual cat is. So what I might do if I were going to share this at home, I might grab the link for this video. I might drop the link into my workspace, have students watch the little video, maybe instruct them to just think about it. And then I might record a quick little screencastify or other video of myself just doing a think aloud with it because I know that they're not going to have access to the tools and materials that they would normally have to do this in class, and I might really just want to get them thinking. So I would see this as maybe a quick little activity that they're just going to more watch and think about before we move on to the action task. So here is the action task for this particular lesson, and again, there's some great and the point is sections. Um, materials and tools on the side You'll notice that there are some suggested tools and materials that you would provide to students if you were doing this together, things like base 10 blocks. Obviously, they're not gonna have access to those at home. Um, there are some PDF tools here as well, like these place value charts, which is great. I would definitely put this as a link under resources in my workspace. However, Keep in mind that many families do not have a printer, so they would really only be able to view this on the screen and wouldn't necessarily be able to use it as um, an interactive tool that they could write on. All right, so let's take a look at this action task. In this action task, the focus is really on getting them to model their thinking and to estimate and to do all those great things, which again, in class is wonderful. Distance learning, not quite as easy to do. So here they have a picture of some uh, various containers that have various capacity listed, and they're supposed to choose three of those containers um, and decide what's the smallest size bowl that they would need to hold the contents of all three containers. In class, I would absolutely do it that way. As distance learning though, I find it's just a little bit wordy. So if we go over here to the Google Doc version, when you open up the Google Doc version, as always, it gives you a view only. So of course, you're going to make a copy first and you're gonna name it. So once you've made your copy and renamed it, now of course your Google Doc is fully modifiable. So just give that a second to open. So this is where you're going to really want to carefully think through for any kind of a doc, uh, any kind of an action task that you're sharing with your students. You're really going to want to think through the wording of the questions and try to modify it so that it's something that students could do on their own. Remembering that family situations are all different and they may or may not um, have someone at home who is able to help them with this or has the time to help them with this. So let's look at that first question. Choose three uh, containers above. What size is the smallest bowl you would need to hold the contents of all three containers? Again, a little bit wordy. I would just simplify this. Choose three containers above. What is the total capacity for all three? Basically, I'm just adding them, asking them to add it. The second part of this is estimate to show that your answers make sense. Again, maybe a little less clear if you're doing it at home. So maybe here I would say, draw a model to show how you got your answer. You could draw an open number line or base 10 blocks, for example. So I might just simplify it like that um, and get them to 
draw a model. I might leave a little more space here. Um, and then the last part is repeat with three different combinations of containers. Again, I might just simplify this. Repeat with a different combination of containers. Show your thinking. Use a picture or model. So just trying to simplify it a little bit, realizing that um, the guidelines are for one hour of academic work a day, and this is not going to be done in the context of a whole block. So I might simplify an action task like that. Um, and same thing for a consolidate and for a your turn. I might just really carefully read over the questions um, to make sure that they are questions that could potentially be done completely independently and are really going to focus on those big ideas. Another great thing that you can look at for the at-home learning, you may not do an action task, a minds on, a consolidate, and a your turn. You may pick part of that to do. You may also send some games and puzzles as a way to practice some of those skills. So if I click on the games and puzzles, what's great is if I, if I want it to be a digital game, I could say show digital games only. And we were working on decimals just now. Here is a little digital game that I might grab the link for and put that in my workspace or doc or however else I'm sharing with my students. And that might be something that I get them to do um, to practice those skills. So just a couple of thoughts, just always keeping in mind that students may or may not have access to things like a printer or counters or other ways to model and that they may or may not have um, someone that's available to support. So we just want to really try and make um, this kind of accessible for all our students. Reach out anytime with any questions to anyone on the math team and we would be happy to help.